this video, we're going to be looking at some advanced repair techniques um, within ANSYS Space Claim, and these can also be used in ANSYS Discovery. So Space Claim has got some great um, repair tools that are found in the repair tab. I'm just going to just walk you through how these work um, first. So in the repair tab, we've got a number of tools. If you ever import your model into Space Claim or you're working on a model and it's transparent, um, that's your first indication that it's a, a surface model. Um, a lot of the time, if we're going to mesh apart, if we're going to potentially you know, machine apart, it's more beneficial uh, for the part to be a, a solid. Um, if we then look into our tree, our structure tree on the left hand side, we can see that this is made up of a number of surfaces, which we can see here. Um, so we need to get this part back to a, um, a solid model and we've got a few tools to, um, to do that. So these are found, as I said, in the repair tab. Here we can see that we have three tools to solidify our model. We've got stitch, gaps and missing faces. We always recommend working top down, so starting at stitch, then looking for gaps, then looking for missing faces. So, um, so the first thing we'll do is we'll click the stitch tool. And what you'll notice is obviously there's a number of areas in the model that are highlighted um, red. Um, we have a, obviously a tolerance that we're looking at here. And if we look to the left hand side, we can see that at the moment our tolerance is set to 0.1 millimeters. Um, we can obviously increase that tolerance, decrease that tolerance. But if I just zoom in on in an area, we can start to see that these surfaces aren't quite coincident, which is obviously why it's, it's highlighting that area. So we can see that's the, the, air, the issue at the moment. So um, we can see that obviously that these areas will all have edges and surfaces that aren't quite coincident, which is obviously causing, causing the problem. So we hit the tick box, we're going to leave this as default, and we can see that the part hasn't solidified, we're not left with a solid at the moment, um, but we are now left with one surface in our tree. So we can then move on to gaps. So if we click the gaps tool, Again, here on the left hand side, we can modify our options. Um, default is 0.1, but if you want to just search the model for areas larger than that, we can obviously change our default options. Um, and we can start to see what gaps are. So you can see that this is picking this as a gap. If it didn't find it, it would patch a missing face in here, but you may wish to fix these areas as gaps. So if I just click on one of these areas, you can fix them individually if you want, or you can just hit the tick box and let the software fix them themselves. You can see what happens, it just sort of closes that area up and we can see that happen for all of these areas. So those are the gaps that have now finished. So finally now we're still not left with a solid so we can look for missing faces. So we click the missing faces tool, we can see that we found three missing faces, we will highlight the areas where they are and um, again we can fill or patch these faces. So we've got the options, and again, you've got your, your options on the left-hand side. So we've got two missing faces here. What the software will try and do is it will try and match the, the curvature of surrounding faces. Again, you can fix these individually, or you can hit the tick box and let the software fix these. Once you've fixed those, we can now clearly see that our part has solidified. Our first indication is it's, it's, it's an opaque model, but we can also look into the tree. We can see that it now says solid, and it also is a green cube, which is our solid symbol. So now this is a solid, potentially now we, we would be able to, to mesh it or machine this part or save it out and send it to someone someone else. And it's also easier potentially to modify and change geometry if it's a, if it's a solid part. So that's the, um, the standard way of repairing. What I'm gonna look at now is two examples of some additional tips and techniques when potentially these tools may not, um, may not, be, may not work um, in an automated way um, so you have to do a bit of additional additional work yourself. So um, we're going to look at this model. So again, um, with this model, we can see straight away that it's a, a potentially a surface and um, it's it's transparent. But again, the main indication is we look in the tree and we can see that this model is made up of, of a number of different surfaces. So again, the first thing we always do is we go to our repair tab and we work top down, we click the stitch tool. One stitchable edge, which hopefully means that all these multiple surfaces will turn into one surface, so we hit the tick box. So we've fixed the, the stitching, still not a solid, so we can then look for gaps. 
So it has found a gap, but it's always good. You know, we like to look at the actual areas that it's trying to fix. So if we actually look at this area, we can see that this is a rather than a gap, it looks more of a, a corrupt face. It looks like a bit of a, um, a dodgy or corrupt face. So um, the best thing to do in this instance is to right click and delete it. We don't want this surface. There's not a lot we can do with it. We don't really want it in our model, so we just want to get rid of it. So we right click on this individual surface once it's selected and just hit the delete key. So um, now we can try and look for gaps again and let the software see whether it will fix these areas. You can see it has fixed that area, but maybe it's not as clean a fix as potentially you may want. So um, you may undo and look for missing faces, see whether you can patch a missing face in there. It hasn't found that area, but it has found this area. So we'll patch a missing face in there. This area, the reason it's not finding this as a missing face is because of this edge here. So this edge that's come off that corrupt face, it's a little bit, um, it's not, not, not brilliant. You can see it's a little bit wavy. Um, so what we could potentially do is use some geometry tools to sort of clean up this area ever so slightly. Obviously we want to, no, not modify the model as much as possible. So we want to minimize the modifications we're making. But we can use our split tool to select on these two surfaces. There's a number of ways we can split, but one of them is with a UV cutter point. So it's going to follow the curvature of the, of the surface. And then we can just do a slight cut. And you can see now that what I'm going to do is actually get rid of these two surfaces. So the surfaces with the wavy edge, again, I'm going to right click on them and delete. Now we can see that this is a much cleaner edge and hopefully if I go to my repair tab and click the missing faces tool, I can patch a nice missing face there that's going to look a lot better than the other one. And then we're back to a, um, a solid. So that's just another little technique. If you have got, if you do see corrupt faces, best technique is to get rid of them and try and use the software to, um, to patch in a, a, a better face. In this final video, we will be looking at um, another technique that we can use um, when potentially the repair tools um, might not be giving you the exact results that you're after. So in this um, model, we can see that, um, again, uh, this is made up of a number of surfaces. We can look in our tree. Um, in this instance, they're all individual surfaces. So we've got 846 individual surfaces um, that make up this model. Um, so again, we go into the repair tab and the first thing to do is to um, click the stitch tool because we want to try and get all those surfaces back to hopefully one or even a solid sometimes. So we click the stitch tool and um, it'll find all the edges in the model which can be stitched again within your tolerance on the left hand side. Hit the tick box and within a couple of seconds we'll hopefully have um, just one surface left. So we can see we've now got just one surface or one surface body left, um, but still not a solid. So then we can look for gaps. Again, you can modify your tolerances, but the software hasn't found any. Um, and then we can look for missing faces and it has found one area. But if we look at the area, it looks a little bit strange. So we can sort of zoom in to investigate. Um, you do have tools here as well. If you got if you can't see physically see because it might be such a small area, you do have these tools as well. Zoom to fit and clip volume to use and you can snap between your, um, your problem areas. Um, so now we can um, just click on this surface. And again, as in the other model, we can see that it's clearly corrupted. So we don't really want that in our model. We can see we've got some quite nasty stuff going on down here. Um, so we're gonna right click and delete that surface. I always recommend right clicking and deleting, not clicking the delete key on the keyboard. The delete key on the keyboard will almost try and do a, a fill. So um, just be wary of that. Um, so now we can potentially look for missing faces. Again, it's found this area where we'd expect. And we potentially can have a look what happens when we fill this area in. So we can see um, the result looks potentially all right from the front. But if we look at it from the side angle, we can see that there is a little bit of this sort of bulbous area here, um, which might not be ideal, might not be what we're at exactly what we're looking for. So um, if I right click and delete this newly created surface, we can then potentially um, do a bit of manual surface creation ourselves. So this is using 
the blend tool, which is found in the design tab. So we click the blend tool here and holding control, we can click on two edges. And then this will just give us a straight blend between these two. This will give, this is the preview we're looking at at the moment. But if we want to reference some curves or edges or for surfaces, we can use this option here to select guides. So we can select guides, hold control again to select, in this instance, these two surfaces. We can now see that it's matching that curvature, matching the tangency of um, the surrounding faces. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to hit the tick box. So I've created this surface. I'm now going to let the missing faces tool create this surface down here. It can probably handle that. This surface where we've got that bulbous area again, rather than letting the missing faces tool do it, I may want to, um, I may use the blend tool myself. So um, I'm going to select on this edge and shift select on this edge. So I get all the edges in between. And then I'm going to hold control and click on this edge at the top here so we get a bit of a preview i'm quite happy with that it looks like a nice straight blend that's probably more realistic to what the part was um, and then i can hit the tick box and we're back to a solid so that's again another tool or technique that you can use when um, when potentially the repair tools don't give you the exact result that you want they are very powerful tools they are great at identifying problem areas but sometimes you do need to do a few manual fixes to your models um, so these tools can be used in ANSYS Space Claim and also ANSYS Discovery. Thanks for watching and if you've got any questions just feel free to put them in the comments.